Well, well, just started playing Minecraft Legends and wondering what the heck is even going on? No worries, you've come to the right place. Minecraft Legends immerses you in a real-time action strategy adventure set in the Minecraft universe during a piglin invasion. The overworld is under attack. As the nether's corruption spreads, it is up to you to protect it by uniting its mobs and leading the defense. While Minecraft Legends may resemble vanilla Minecraft at first glance, its gameplay is radically different. As a result, getting started can be daunting especially if you're accustomed to vanilla Minecraft. Fortunately, I'm here to guide you through everything you need to know, transforming you from a noob to a pro. If you like Minecraft Legends content and want to see more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe. Like I said, the game mechanics couldn't be more different from typical Minecraft. Instead of placing individual blocks, mining, and crafting tools, in Minecraft Legends, you are building entire structures, summoning golems, and leading battles all from the back of your donkey. The tutorial does a decent job getting you familiar with the controls. After you have learned how to summon and command troops, it is time to go into some tips I have picked to help you get better at Minecraft Legends. First off, if you look at the bottom right of your screen by the fire, that number is how many mobs you can spawn in at one time. If that number goes down, then that means that one of your mobs has died. If you try to summon more than that, you will get an error message saying you can't spawn any more at this time. It took me a while to understand what the heck that limit was until I noticed this. When you are corralling troops, you will notice a number to the left of the fire and banner emblem. This is the number of troops that are following you right at that moment. If this number doesn't match the fire number, then you are not guiding all of the available troops that you have spawned. Knowing this little tip will help you keep from guessing what you have following you or not. My next tip is that you can spend resources as you slowly gather them. What I mean by that is, if you have 800 wood or stone queued up to gather and you already have 900 in your inventory, you can go ahead and start spending those resources building things instead of waiting till it caps at 1000 and losing the rest of those resources. This is a very useful tip when fortifying towns. My next tip is when you are fortifying your towns, you're going to need to build walls and gates around the entire town. Once you do that, you'll want to build carpenter huts and make sure every piece of wall is within range of at least one carpenter hut. This will mean your walls will always be repairing themselves, which is really OP. It is important to note that the effects of the carpenter huts do not stack, but building more will increase the overall range. After that, you want to build defense towers inside and outside of the walls, preferably within carpenter hut range. The next set of tips is for raiding specifically. Raiding is a fundamental part of the game and honestly it is a lot of fun leading the charge with an army of mobs behind you. When raiding a piglin base, you want to plan the most efficient route to the portal. Don't worry about destroying every enemy structure. I recommend destroying only what stands in your way and if they have a carpenter hut, make sure you destroy that too. The name of the game is destroying the portal because once you do that, you win. After you plan out the fastest route to the portal, you want to then start placing mob spawners the closest you can. When starting off, I recommend having an equal mix of plank, cobblestone, grindstone, and mossy golems. This will give you a good mix. Plank and grindstone golems are great against enemy mobs, and cobblestone golems are great against enemy structures. Mossy golems will heal you and your allies, which will keep them alive a lot longer. From there, I recommend sending the entire group at the gate, or the first structure that's in your way. While they're doing their thing, it is your job to protect them. You need to pick off the enemy piglins by riding around to keep your mobs safe. My next tip is when you see the number of mobs start to dip below half, go back to your mob spawners and gather them again for another charge. And when you get to the portal, focus on just spawning cobblestone and mossy golems. That way, they'll be able to focus on taking down the portal while you protect them. After that, it is just rinse and repeat. Another major tip is to run around as fast as you can right after you successfully take down a portal. For some reason, a bunch of prismarine drops all around the area and it despawns super fast. You want as much prismarine as possible because you use this to upgrade at the Well of Fate. The first couple of times, I didn't run around to collect it before it went away, so I missed out on a lot. My final tip is to explore. Just like regular Minecraft, it pays to explore. You will find random chests everywhere, including in forts. There are also a lot of other cool things to find that I won't ruin for you so you can experience it yourself. If this beginner's guide helped at all, be sure to leave a like so more people can see it. And if you want more Minecraft Legends content, maybe even consider subscribing. Well, that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments any other tips you might have. 
Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.